Good morning. Selamat pagi. Um, Mr. Fozi Al Sultan, yes, Chairman of the IFPRI Board and Chairman and Chairman and Senior Partner of FNN Consultancy in Kuwait. Dr. Sengen Fan, Director General of IFPRI. Dr. Simon Hearn, Principal Advisor, Strategy and Policy, Australian Center for International Agricultural Research, Australia. And distinguished guests. First of all, I would like to say thank you. Welcome to all of you that fly from other country to Indonesia. And very welcome to the one who first come to visit Jakarta. Yeah. And the one who visited 10 years ago, I think you will see that it is a totally different city compared to 10 years ago. It is a pleasure for me to deliver this opening remarks for our international workshop titled Climate Change, Price Volatility and Food Security, the Perspective from Southeast Asia. This workshop organized by the IFPRI and jointly hosted by the National Team for the Acceleration of Poverty Reduction and the Ministry of Agriculture of the Republic of Indonesia. Let me begin by sharing with you my observation in, the, in regards to the commodity price volatility in Southeast Asia region and of course in, also in our country. It is very important for us to observe that the South Asia, East Asia region is a very vibrant economy with a very strong economic growth. The population of Southeast Asia will soon be exceed 500 million people, of which more than half, which is 200 million, will be living in Indonesia. So this is half of the population will be living in Indonesia. This represents a huge market potential with equally huge demands. With the rapid regional development of Southeast Asian economy, a new urban middle class will emerge, which will cause changes of demands and priorities. In Indonesia, 50% people live in the urban area, and 50, half and half, 50% living in the rural area. But we predict by the year of 2025, this proportion will change to 75 and 25. So it means two out of three people in Indonesia will be living in the urban area. And if you know in Java, maybe in 2025, 80% will become an urban. Yeah? So, Paul, when you live in Indonesia 20 years ago, 25 years ago, Java itself will become, 80% will become urban. Yeah. This improvement of prosperity, of course, will increase our demand for food commodities, including rice, which in turn will affect the global market. Yeah. You know, if the most fertile land is in Java and then 80% become an urban, I think one side the demand is increasing, but one side on the other side, the land for agriculture is also decreasing. Yeah. On the other side, some agricultural products, which before we only consume as food, now has been considered as alternative source of energy. Already, staple food corp such as corn has been considered as renewable resources for methanol gas. Such competition for resources will inevitably also cause price volatility. These are amongst the challenges we will be facing in the future. The recent global climate change also has an enormous impact and will continue to have an impact on production of rice and other agricultural products in Indonesia. As irregular climate 
pattern cause drops in yield and production, especially also for rice. Indonesia is currently experiencing an above normal rainfall conditions that are expected to result in a record wet season rice crop. However, regional anomalies exist such as floods in Lampung on the island of Sumatra and in, Fe in February and also prolonged drought in Nusa Tenggara Timur in NTT that this also dis destroys crops. This is of course our interest because I came from the national team for the acceleration of poverty reductions. At the present, two-thirds of Indonesian poor people's expenditure goes to food, okay? of which more than 25% is spent on rice. And maybe for the rural area, it's almost 40%, 30-something percent. So once you have increased rice price, you will increase also the poverty. Therefore, rice price volatility will certainly affect the poor. 70% of the rural poor are net consumer of rice, consume more that, than what they produce. And according to the World Bank, a 10% increase in the price of rice <coughs> is estimated to lead a 1.3 percentage point <coughs> increase in poverty in poverty rate. By international standards, Indonesia has a credible record in reducing poverty and improving living standards in the first decade of the 21st century. And after the crisis, despite moderate economic growth, poverty has continued to fall significantly since 1998, which is the financial crisis. Our government is committed strongly to accelerate poverty reduction and various efforts have been done in this matter. In the year of 2000 and 2008, we have successfully changed the priorities of our state subsidies. By diverting our oil subsidies, which are, are enjoyed by only a fraction of our people, so the subsidy of fuel, 40% yeah, of them are enjoyed by the 20% of the rich in Indonesia. So the subsidy, only 5% is enjoyed by the poor. So this is very, very unfair. And I, as I mentioned on Sunday meeting, that, you know, for example, the, the, the expenditure for education is only around 3 billion, uh, 3 trillion rupiah. For health is only 20 trillion rupiah, while the subsidy is around 95 trillion. So this is, uh, you know, when I think it's very easy if we can get a lot of more money if we can change the subsidy uh, in, in, into subsidy for the poor. And how, how we, do, we did this? We, we, when we increase the price, because, because the, the fuel price is very political in Indonesia. Yeah? The previous president failed to increase the, uh, the fuel price. But in 2005, we give direct cash transfers to the poor people. So from the subsidy, I think more than half we translate into uh, what we call it the uh, cash transfers, unconditional cash transfers, the UCT. Yeah? And I own it was a success program. I think it was the biggest cash transfers in the world because it involved 20 million households at that time. So we, we prepared it in six months because we, at that time we don't have the, the name and the address of the poor household at that time. So we did the survey very quickly at that time. And after that, every three years we improved the survey. And in 2005, we did the second survey on 2008. Now in 2011, on, in July, we will do again the survey and hopefully with a better methodology, we, have, uh, we try to improve the methodology of the survey. We try to combine the proximate testing, but also we want to use what we call it the community-based data. 
So hopefully we will have a better data next year and we can use that for our social protection program. And we have also been successful in replacing kerosene. You know, kerosene is, uh, our kerosene is actually is a very good quality kerosene because we call it the jet kerosene. So can you imagine, because we subsidize the jet kerosene, everybody use that for cooking. Actually, this should be used for the airplane and so on. You know, if you change a little bit, you, you can use it as a uh, after for the, for the airplane. So it's very waste of resources when you use this kerosene, our good quality kerosene, just simply just for cooking and using, and then, you know, untuk bakar sampah, apa segala macam, this is a very waste of resources. Yeah? We replace kerosene by giving free small tank of LPG, the, what is LPG? Liquid petroleum gas. Yeah? So this is like uh, what we call it self-targeting because there is, of course, they don't want to take this small tank of LPG. So we give it free to the uh, small traders and uh, not traders, but the small, what you call it, restaurant uh, in the, uh, you know, next to the streets, Kaki Lima. I don't know how to trans translate Kaki Lima in English, but uh, you can see this. All of, if you see people that sell some food on the street, now they use the small tank, the three kilogram small tanks of LPG. So we, we, we try to divert the use of kerosene into this natural, liquid natural gas. However, this community price volatility is threatening our effort in poverty reductions. I look at your IFPRI Global Hunger Index. And Indonesia is, the, 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 the point is, welcome by you, we start early. Please. Pak Bayu di depan, Pak. Ya, ya langsung aja, Pak. Our IFPRI Global Hunger Index in 2010 is 13.2. Yeah. Next to the Philippines and Vietnam. It has been decreasing. You can look at the pattern, it is decreasing. But unfortunately, it's still in the yellow, what you call it, if we call it yellow zone. So we need to alert about, about this. Yeah. So it is very timely that we have this international workshop today. We have a great, a great expectation from this workshop. We want to listen from all of you to learn what has been done internationally. We want to hear, we want to learn about how to strengthen our food security, how to increase our agricultural productivity. In Indonesia, people who works, people that works, but still living under the poverty line, most of them are working in the agricultural sectors. So productivity is a key if we want to increase the welfare of these farmers, these people that work on the agricultural sectors. We want also to hear about how to develop a small farmer value chains, how to mitigate climate change, how to rebuild region which has been struck by a natural disaster, how to develop a comprehensive early warning system including sharp rises in food prices, from my perspective, I, we want to hear how to develop an innovative safety nets for farmers, such as harvest insurance schemes, whether it is appropriate in Indonesia or not. Yeah. How to develop a more integrated social protection program if we have this price volatility. As the Executive Secretary of National Team for the Acceleration of Poverty Reduction, I'm very interested to hear more from the distinguished guests and experts whom are gathered here today for this international workshop. 
It is our sincere wish that today we will be able to learn from you. Before I finish my remarks, I would like to thank IFPRI, the Ministry of Agriculture, and also all of you that work behind the scenes to make today's workshop a success. Thank you for all, all of you. Thank you.